Alrighty. Got our diagram. It's electrics time. So we've got everything that we need and we've got our batteries on charge so that they're all charged and ready to go. And then we can start wiring everything together. Hey guys, before we start today, just a disclaimer, we are not professional electricians. We do have some basic DIY uh, electrical and wiring knowledge and we have done our own research. So we do think that what we are going to do today is the correct way to do it. However, please do take everything that we do and say with a pinch of salt on electrics here because we're all learning and each of us has slightly different setups and, and needs. So please do your own research, double check everything you see from everybody and if you don't have the required experience yourself do have a professional check out your DIY system when you're done for you know safety. With that out of the way let's crack on and get some power in here. Two batteries is ordered. So these are our lithium batteries we fully charge them before we start any wiring because they have to be both fully charged to connect them together to act as one battery. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take all of these charging boxes. So this one, the shunt, uh, the, the red dark over there, um, and we're going to screw them on onto our mounting uh, structure here. So we, we did a video on uh, how we built this and why we built it like this, but essentially all of our, all of our bits and pieces are going to be positioned on the outside of this box and the batteries will live right there. are here, the shunt is here, and these are our fuse boxes. Now you also have these lit lids for them, which are pretty cool. What I like about these uh, fuse boxes is that uh, they have uh, lights, so if a fuse blows, the light will turn on and you know which fuse is going instead of you know trying to check every single one, because they're not that easy to pull out. Though of course you, you might know which fuse is broken by, uh, uh, you know, which appliance is not working, um, as long as you've labeled the, the cables. <laughs> right then, to connect the batteries, you can connect them in two different ways. One is in series and the other one is in parallel. We're going to connect them in parallel because we would like to keep the volts the same, but double the amp hours. Now here we have uh, two batteries, each of them is 100 amp hours, so by connecting them in parallel we make our battery bank 200 amp hours. To connect the batteries in parallel you have to connect positive terminal to positive terminal and negative terminal to negative terminal. And just for continuity's sake we have some red uh, heat shrink ar around, around these terminals just so we know that uh, this cable goes around the positive and the black one stays negative. So we're going to connect the positive up first and then leave the negative till last just the same way you work on a car battery. We're just doing it loosely for now because we're going to be connecting everything else but this is the base this is what should go on first that cap i think it can sort of go on top of that it's got a, a top hat with a slight bend in it it's a fashionable terminal okay okay so we are thinking of starting with the mppt so we're gonna just start with the mppt and gonna test out how to put in the fuse effectively just remember to fuse every single line every positive cable you have you need to have the appropriate fuse. And the fuse needs to be rated for lower than the thickness of the wire, but higher than the ampage of what it's actually coming from. Yeah. So essentially the fuse will blow if the device is not working properly, but the fuse will blow before the wire burns out. And that's very important. Because if the wire catches on fire and starts to melt and short circuits, that's how you get fires, electrical fires. So always fuse everything. So we have MPPT to fuse, should be around 30 centimeters. Then the fuse to the positive terminals, another seven centimeters. And the MPPT to the shunt, so that's, the, that's this 
here, which is the negative cable is 18 centimeters. So this is our 16 mil cable. We've got two meters of red, two meters of black. So we're going to use red for positive, black for negative. We've calculated that this should be enough for all the big boxes and 16 mil is plenty thick enough to handle the amperages that we're handling with all of this. <laughs> I think my handle is coming off. Ooh. There you go. All right, that works. Just need more pressure. So now that we've got our wire cut, we're going to strip back the head of this wire so that it can fit in one of these eyelets and we'll crimp that down and then the eyelet can attach into our fuse holder like that. So with these eyelet connectors, there's lots of different shapes and sizes that you can get, but there's two numbers that you need to know about. The first number, which is the first one, refers to the diameter size of this hole. So this is a 16 mil cable, so we need a 16 mil entrance. And then the second one is the size of the bolt hole. So this is a five because this bolt hole size is a five, so they'll fit on nice and secure. So with the cable cut, we're going to basically trim both sides so it looks like this, so we can actually put them in the eyelets. And we're going to use a simple crafting knife to get the rubber off. You have to be careful with the crafting knife, obviously, because it's a sharp knife and you don't want to stab your fingers. And it is quite tricky to cut the rubber off and not cut too deep. So now that we've got the end trimmed off, we're going to crimp the eyelet onto the wire so it stays firm. Otherwise, it's just going to fall off. So in order to crimp this on, what we've got is one of these heavy duty crimping tools that go from 6mm all the way up to 50mm cable. So we'll leave a link down in the description below to this tool. It's not that expensive and it definitely will ensure that your crimps are secure, which is very important for safety, especially when you're dealing with all this relatively high ampage stuff in comparison to the rest of the van. So we've got this set on the 16mm settings. So we just pop our eyelet in and then we just close it so it's got a hold of it like that. So we want to put our cable in and we want to push it all the way down so it's nice and tight there. Then we just crimp this. There we go. So as you can see that squash that collar there around the copper that's come on the inside. So if I pull I'm pulling nearly as hard as I can and that's not coming out. So once you've done your crimp you want to protect that exposed join with some heat shrink. So you just want a piece that will cover everything that you've done right up to this butt here. Then you want to grab a heat gun or a lighter, anything that produces heat. Keep it away from your fingers. Yeah. And just... I think the next time we cut that, mm. uh, we should um, cut a little bit less. Yeah. I don't think it's a problem, the cable is protected, but uh, <laughs> still. Yeah. Cool. So now that we've got that on, we can just put it in our fuse holder. Ta-da! Well, now that that side's on the fuse holder, we'll put the other side into the MPPT. So with the MPPT, we want to be putting it in the battery positive. And in this hole, there's a flathead screwdriver screw that you can use to tighten and loosen the hole of where you put the wire in. Let's get that and loosen it. And you'll see there at the top that there's an opening being created. So that open all the way, we can slot that there in the top, push it down, and whilst we're pushing it down, we can tighten this. And essentially, the MPPT is crimping itself onto the cable. So if I give that a tug, that's not coming out. Now that that's in, we reach the fuse, which is uh, right here. There so you go. And then we need to put the fuse in here and then another length of cable there. Yeah. So for this, we've got a 50 amp MPPT. So we're going to put in a 60 amp fuse. And basically with this fuse, once everything's connected, we can pop this lid over and mm. that all will be protected. You want to fuse everything as close to the positive terminal of the battery as possible. This way, if anything does end up blowing the fuse, the chances of it shorting something else out or causing a fire or melting the cable if you haven't done your cabling correctly is very low because there's only a very short cable length for it to travel before it reaches the fuse and blows it. Cool. Nice and protected fuse. I do really wish that the batteries were less flashy because it's very hard <laughs> to make out what's happening there. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's, you can see that, that's the fuse, but well, still. Actually, 
we will get around to labeling everything but we can put the label on the fuse holder and then yep. we know what fuse that is for so this can be mppt exactly um, yeah yeah okay that's a perfect place to put a label then yeah brilliant so until everything is connected up both on the positive and to the negative end of the battery we don't have to worry about flow and the negative end we're going to connect up as the last wire so we're going to connect everything up first all the negatives will go to the shunt and then the shunt to the battery will be the last wire that we put in so there's a few things with wiring that gets most of us a bit confused the first time we try and wrap our head around it and one of those things for us as well was earthing or grounding or whatever other word you want to call it but basically where do you run the negative cable for your, all your devices now the best practice is that you should run all your negatives back to the negative terminal of your battery that way you have a complete circuit and it's contained within your battery what some other people do and in fact what vw have done with some of their electronics in our van is instead of running all the way back to the battery because you know they might have to go the length of the van they just get a piece of bare metal and then attach the wire, the negative wire, to that bare piece of metal. And although that does work, in these modern vehicles with all their modern technology and interferences, it does make it a little bit more risky because it makes your entire van live. So although it's only 12 volts, it's not high at all, it can still short or interfere with something and yeah, I don't want to deal with that. The second thing is that our system is a lithium system, so we have to track all the energy we're pumping in and out of the batteries which means they all have to run through our shunt anyway so we have to connect them back to the battery anyway in our case with lead acid batteries you don't have to you can just ground it to the chassis but in lithium's case and in our case we have to and then the third thing is it's just good general practice everything's contained within one system you don't have to worry about anything else it's all contained Hey guys, so we're editing the video right now and so far after hours of strenuous cutting it is 45 minutes long and even in the first 10 minutes there has been so much information that even our own brains are feeling a little bit frazzled even though we know the information that we have said in the video so if we're feeling a little bit overwhelmed then I can't even imagine how you may be feeling if you're new at this so we're going to end this video here and carry on with this electrics installation next week thank you so much for joining us today if you don't want to miss the continuation of this electrics installation then please remember to subscribe and press the bell notification icon as always leave your questions and your wisdom down in the comments below and we'll see you next week hmm i don't think this is the right fuse box the end fell off that seemed pretty tight so <laughs> you were saying ah! <laughs>